We're back in North Carolina, and I've already had a fishing accident. I'm David from Ireland. Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. You getting their attention? This episode is brought to you by Blue Microphone. We're actually traveling with the Yeti Blue Microphone, which is right here in front of my mouth. So nice. We're actually in our old French classroom where I took we, three years of French between, well, six years of French between the two of yeah, us. And we never had a class together, but we are in that room right now. Harness doing Central High School. Good Mythical Morning, and you are watching from the comfort of wherever you're comfortable having a mythical morning no matter what time of day it is. So thanks for joining us. We're continuing the experiment of having Good Mythical Mornings while on the road. That's right, North Carolina, Harness Central High School, our old French room, which is now Coach Gage's History, history class. class. Yeah. It used to be across the hall over there. He was Coach Gage was our teacher. He Things was have changed. Basketball coach. It's just not the same. Well, and there's no class is not in session. I think school is well, out. No, school is out uh, as For, of just like today. They just went home. They'll be back tomorrow. I don't know. I, have, I don't ask questions about this. But what are we doing back home? Why are we in North Carolina? Believe it or not, and we're going first of all, we're going to be here all week. We're going to be broadcasting all week from this classroom. Yes. We're back because, for whatever reason, we were asked to deliver the commencement address for our high school's graduation. And just to clarify, we graduated from high school many years ago, 1996, to blow your pants off. Oh, exactly. so you're saying like, it's not like we're the valedictorians coming. Right. We're not graduating from high school we're right not, now. We're not high school students. We're coming back to deliver the commencement address. I don't think anybody thought that. Oh, I actually thought that. I'm, I'm kind of regressing back. It feels very weird to be back here after so many years of not being here, seeing familiar faces like Coach Gage and a couple of other people help, but it's still weird. And I think I'm a little keyed up about the fact that we're giving the commencement address. I, f I sense a lot of pressure to meet expectations, but yet I have no clue what those expectations are. Do they expect us to be funny? Do they expect us to be groundbreakingly challenging? Well, the interesting thing is if you grab the program, yeah. We've already seen the program. We're in here. Uh, it says... Commencement address. Foundations is the, is the name of, of, our, of our speech. But, and I just talked to the lady who helped to organize this, and I said, Foundations, where'd you get that from? She said, <clears throat> you sent it to me in an email. I was like, no, I didn't. I think... I, you, you, did, you didn't use the word foundations. I, I, we wrote the speech yesterday. I haven't, yeah. I mean, I haven't sent it to her. And I, we didn't know what we were going to talk about, but it's called Foundations, just in case you want to know. It's really not about Foundations, but the speech is called Foundations. That's what people are going to see in the program. I think that if you're doing a commencement program, it fills in things like you could either use Latin or just random words, and that was the random oh. generator for our commencement address. We should change our commencement address and go with that. The theme is Foundations. Yeah, it's going to be all about Foundations. Okay, um, but we, we are going to record us doing the commencement address and while it happens yes and that will be uploaded to our main youtube channel if it turns out okay or if it turns out really horribly it's like the worst fail ever we will upload that because that has equal chance of going viral as doing really well yeah so be looking for that on our main channel and if you don't see it it means that it was I think it was a disaster, and we decided not to show you it. So I think over the course of this week, as we broadcast from Harness Central High School, our alma mater, you know, we'll be we'll be taking trips down memory lane. But for a start, I thought it would be good just to talk about coming back home to North Carolina, having been gone a year. Now we've come back a few times to visit, yeah, for for the holidays and things like that. But it, this being a little bit different, you know, settling into life in LA. Yeah. Well, it, it has. It, I've only been in LA for a year, and I've realized how used I've gotten used to things. I have gotten yeah, people. There are a lot of people in Los Angeles. Just crawling everywhere. We just got uh, we got in recently, and one of the first things we did was my wife and I and my kids. We all went and hung out with my brother, his wife, and his kids, and we went to like one of those fun park things that has a first of all I had a roller skating rink, so I got to put on the old roller skates. Actually, I don't have old roller skates. I just rent them. I just rent them from people. Did you did it? I did that. You risk back injury for that? Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's just, I such a chance to roller skate. I'm going to take advantage of that. I did that for a little bit. And the thing that I was struck with... Keep your kids off crack. There was no one there. There's a few people in the roller skating rink, but then we went out to the go-karts. 
We had the go-karts to ourselves, literally. We had to get an employee from inside to come out and turn them on so we could use them. Really? Then we went to the putt-putt course. Again, we had to get an employee to come and give us, we were the only ones at the putt-putt course. What? And then there was this. Did you reserve a private party? No, there's just nobody in North Carolina. It, 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 like if you go someplace, Wednesday, you know, middle of the week on a afternoon, no one is there. And I, and I was telling the guy that came with my brother, I was like, you know, if this was Los Angeles, there would be a thousand kids. Like I would, in order to like play putt putt, you'd have to like go through the kids and like move them, like move them apart like waters in order just to get to the hole. But here we have the whole place to ourselves. There's nobody here. And but that's a good thing, right? Or it's just a different thing. It's fr it was frightening. It was like the apocalypse had happened. It was very post-apocalyptic. It was like, all right, the world's economy is shut down. Let's go play putt putt at the old putt putt course. No, no, no. That's not the case. You're just in North Carolina again. Right. So you you adopt that new mentality. Now I did not get to do any go karts yet. I, I would I would have liked to have done that. If you would have like invited me. Oh, you weren't invited. Well, I, I was I was in Kinston, North Carolina, with my in laws. Anyway, you know we take this time to visit with close relatives. There's no there's no go kart park or whatever you call it. I think there is a dilapidated putt putt place in Kinston, but we don't frequent that that location. It yeah. seems a little shady. That's smart. You never know where the holes go to. It's all so suspicious. Is all I'm really saying. Well, there's just a little cup. You what, just get the ball out after you hit it in there. What we did yesterday was we went fishing. Mm -hmm. Now, my father-in-law, Mr. Bobby, as he likes to be called, loves to fish. Mm -hmm. He's retired. That's you know he makes a he makes a habit of fishing as often as possible, and it's a great thing that he takes. Um, his grandkids, Lily and Lincoln, he takes them fishing. Lando's not quite old enough f for most fishing excursions. And it then, can be used as bait, though. I've used toddlers as bait exactly. for, cat, for catfish. I, I don't want to tempt him. You know, Anything that'll get the big one, he might be tempted. Okay. So we go, we go to a fishing hole yesterday, me, Mr. Bobby, and Lily and Lincoln. Now, keep in mind that uh, Christy's father is the guy who... Last Christmas, when I was opening a Barbie for my daughter at his house with a knife and cut my finger and fainted, he was the arms that I fell into when, so, I, when I fainted. Okay. I think I've told that story So he doesn't, res he doesn't respect you. So he's got a certain impression of me. So as we're going out fishing, he's like, no, I'm not going to give you a knife. You know, he's kind of, you know, giving me a hard time, kind of ribbing me about that. He's, I, he's stabbing you with a knife? No, he's just kind of, I'm not going to give you oh. a knife to cut the bait out here. I'm going to let Lily do that. She's nine. She can handle it. Right. You know, and, you know, I take it. It's all in good fun. Mm -hmm. We're friends. Being disrespected by your father-in-law, that's fun. It, it's, it, that's very American, yeah. you know, to do that. So we get out there, and, and the kids are catching a few fish, and, uh, well, I haven't caught anything, but I'm letting the kids catch them. Okay. But then I'm, I'm casting out there, and I actually have this thought. I'm not embellishing anything. When you're fishing, you tend to embellish things. I have this thought, you know what? I'm not a great fisherman. I don't even necessarily love fishing, but I'm very proud that I know how to cast a fishing line. Because that's a difficult thing to do. Well, I mean, honestly, being out in L.A., I'm sure I could meet friends out there from the big city who've never cast a rod in their life. And if you took them out fishing, they'd be like, oh, how do you do this? You know, you, you hold the line, and then you got to let go at the right time, and it flies out there. Oh, are you fly fishing? No, we're just, but you have to move the thing over and then let the other thing go, the bait. All right. There is some technique involved, and I was proud in my mind to think, I know how to do that. No one would have to teach me that. Take pride in the little things. <laughs> and as I'm thinking that, I'm really getting into it, and I'm, you know, I'm, re I'm really zinging it out there. And Christy's dad said, you want to aim for this spot way out there. And I couldn't quite get it. So I was just, and then I was, you know, I, get, I decided I was going to give it real gusto this time. I was going to cast it as far as I could because I hadn't caught anything. Mm -hmm. So I, I rear back. And then I give it the most gusto of any cast I've ever given. And very early in the cast, it, the hook catches something. Ooh. <laughs> but I was giving it so much gusto, did I say that? That the follow through just kept going and it ripped free from whatever it had caught on and just went out there. But as, and all this happened in this blink of an eye, I started looking back as I was casting forward and I realized Lincoln, my son, was back there, and I had hooked him in the back of the head. Oh. 
And he had this stunned look on his face because I knew that I had hooked him and then I had pulled it right out of him. Did it like rip his scalp off and his, like a wig went out into the lake? <laughs> he still had all of his hair as well, far as I could thank tell. Thank goodness but he for was that. Like, he was sitting there stunned and I was like, oh no. And uh, Christy's dad runs over oh. and he's like, he's like, where's the bait? And he thought it was down. I was like, the bait's out there, but I, I hooked him and I pulled it through. And then Lincoln's, oh. Lincoln's staving off crying. He was, you know, he was being a man about it. And we pull his hair back and there's like a, a four inch ditch where I have pulled this hook. You raked him with it. Oh God, no, I hooked him and then raked it out. And I felt... Father of the year. I felt like father of the year. I felt so horrible. I mean, you you don't feel worse than when you've injured your own child. At least I can imagine. I haven't done anything worse than that. Is he talking to you? Uh, he, he didn't cry, and we sat him down on the tailgate of the truck, and we put some ointment on there. Ointment helps and then, everything. And then we put some ice on it, and I said, uh, I said, I'm sorry, son. Do you forgive me? He said, well, next time we go fishing, I'm going to wear a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> so he's a great sport about it. But that's the start of my North Carolina trip, and yet another notch in the belt of going to the in-laws and having some, well, he said, I'm definitely not taking you hunting. You yeah, know? yeah. Don't give this guy a gun. Uh, so, I you know things. If our commencement address, as long as something like that doesn't happen, like I don't, and, I'm not giving you a fishing pole during the commencement address. Thank God he wasn't looking. I mean, seriously, he wasn't looking the other way. I, I could have ripped his eyeball out. Or something. <laughs> I mean, uh, let's just end this quickly. Oh uh, gosh. All right, we don't have the will of mythicality with us. It doesn't travel well. You have to like take it and put it in the overhead, and that just doesn't work out. Sec- security gets very suspicious yeah. when you have spinning things. And so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to spin the invisible wheel of mythicality. Put it up here. Spin it around. There we go. Spin the wheel, spin the wheel. Where it stops, it stops the wheel. That's how we'll end this episode. Good mythical morning. And it says, riding a roller coaster. Okay. So, okay, we just, we just got in. It's like a two. Are we in the front or the back? Uh, it's more fun in the back. Back. Okay, here we go. We're going up the hill. Okay, the front is clearing the hill. Put your hands up, put your hands up, put your hands up.